Hey everyone, we are live at the Pace Studio right now with Jacob Collier. Jacob, thank you for being here, man. What's up? How's it going? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, so congratulations to you because Jesse, Volume Two is out in the world right now. Volumes Three and Four are gonna be out in the world, and uh, the sound check has sounded great. And we'll dive into further into this four volume release strategy uh, after the first song. Um, but uh, sound check has sounded great. We can't wait to share what you do with the internet right now, man. What's coming up first? Thanks, brother. Uh, this is a song called Sky Above. And it goes a little something like this.
Yeah. <laughs> wow, dude, thank you, man. It sounds so good. Um, I really appreciate everybody coming here today. And uh, Jacob, these sound outstanding. Can we talk? Just in case uh, people are discovering you right now for the first time or discovering the fact that this album is out there for the first time, there's yeah. so many interesting things to talk about on uh, Jesse Volume 2 and about the entire project. I mean, can we start with some of the, uh, like how important it was for you to include found sounds and interesting sounds and sounds from things that are very much not traditionally considered to be musical instruments and yes, putting them on the album? That's a really good question. So I guess just to, to kind of set the scene, I've spent the last couple of years making four albums. It's like a one, one quadruple album. And each album is like a different musical universe, I suppose. So they're, they're from different sound worlds, different spaces. Um, so Jesse Volume 1 is orchestral. So it's really broad. It's like acoustic, broad music. Jesse Volume 2 is acoustic, cozy music, just exactly like this. Like small spaces, voices, and things like that. Volume 3 is negative space, craziness, alt hip-hop kind of insanity, electronic, digital um, stuff. And volume four is, a, is a, a, a combination of all these worlds with the human voice as, as the center. I'm halfway through. And in answer to your question, I was brought up in a household f filled with musicians, um, but not necessarily musical instruments. And so I was, I, I guess I found myself in a scenario where anything that made a sound was an instrument. And I would go into the kitchen and pillage, pillage and pillage. <laughs> uh, saucepans are great. Um, Cups and, and, and things are, are good. And, and if you take a marble and roll it across the floor, it's excellent. <laughs> um, and th th there's all, this, all, all sorts of recipes, I suppose, that I kind of um, learned and, and discovered. And so I would record with these odd sounds. And I, I don't know about you, but I like listening to music that sounds like a person's life. And so for me, if you use the, the things that you, that you live with and buy, then the music kind of feels like it has your DNA in it, I suppose. And so it was always a kind of fascination of mine and, and continues to be, actually. Well, dude, I think that the application of the, the garden shears and lawnmower, et cetera, and, the, and a deck of oh, cards yeah. and all those you know things was song. very, very well uh, applied. And it's uh, yeah, nothing that I would have uh, for one second considered of recording and put it on put on an album. But, dude, it sounds so well the way that you have done it. And uh, can we also can we talk about the, the guest artists on the album as well? I mean, from Chris Thiele to, to Becca, who we have here today, to, to Steve there. I. I mean, there's so many. Steve I, yeah. uh, Jojo and Dodie. Dodie, you did one of these not too long ago. But can you talk oh, a little bit about uh, who you've collaborated? with because yeah, there's, I mean, I mean probably over a hundred names there right? are no rules it's just you know are they awesome and and do they make me feel good as a human being and so I've just kind of been thirsty and I've gone traveling and I've discovered and met musicians that fascinate me really and, and whose music I, I am tickled by and so yeah Jesse volume 2 contains musicians such as Catherine Tickell who's like a Northumbrian pipes uh, Northumbrian Pipes player uh, <laughs> from England. She's absolutely astonishingly good. Sam Amidon, who's a, like a, a, a folk fiddler from Vermont, I think, in, uh, here in the US. And then, as you say, there's Steve Vai. That really is a Steve Vai moment. <laughs> and he's, he's, an, he's an absolute magician, a really crazy guy. Jojo, you mentioned. Dodi Becker. Chris Thiele. Umu Sangare, who's a sort of master a vocalist from Mali. He's just absolutely killing. And yeah, I've, I've been, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been traveling all over the place looking for, for musicians. In, on volume one, there's a musician called Hamid El-Kasri, who's a master Gnawa musician. And Gnawa is this street music from Morocco. And it's like, and it's absolutely nuts. It's really hypnotic. And I traveled to, to Casablanca and I, I met with the guy and not, not a word of English, but we kind of made this song together. And um, he then came over to the Royal Albert Hall uh, for, for my concert there with the BBC Proms. And it was his first time in the UK. And, he sang this song with me. It was, it's crazy. The whole thing is, a, is a, a miraculous adventure. I feel really, really lucky to be fascinated for a living. You know. <laughs> yeah. Miraculous. Well, yeah. thank you, man. We're stoked that uh, part of your miraculous adventure is happening here in this room oh, right yeah. now. And oh, yeah. Uh, is, yeah I, I do want to say that this is literally the stuff of dreams. Um, and I, I spent lots of my childhood recording multiple voices on top of each other, often six. But now I've got six singers in the room, including me, and it's just such a privilege. And... Uh, Thank you guys for doing it. It's just so, it's, Dude, it gives you me all the shivers. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. So we've got, there's more music coming up. Is the second one you're doing off of Jesse Volume 2? Or what is, what's coming up next? Uh, this one is a song actually from my first album. It's called In My Room. And it's called Hideaway. And I've done a, a few iterations of, of this song, but this feels like the first time we're doing it the way it was really imagined with the strings and the voices. So I'm, I'm really excited for this actually. As long as I'm in tune.
Y'all ready? Yes. Find what I've been searching for all along. Right away. Even when I close my eyes, darling. Don't follow down. 
This is so much fun. Thank you again for bringing this to us today. We appreciate it, and uh, it sounds great. And I need to know, I asked you like one sentence about it earlier, but I would like to know, I bet 99% of people who are watching this right now have no idea what that is that you're playing right now. Can you oh, tell us about this instrument right oh, in front of you? Yes. Yes, I can. So this is called a harpeggi, and uh, it's a really bizarre thing, and I'm only recently becoming acquainted with it. I've been playing for about two, three months, I guess. And this is tuned in, in whole steps or tones. And it's just a completely bizarre set of, of skills. Like you have to learn all these different shapes. Though on other instruments kind of are, are logical because I've been you playing them for longer, but I love a challenge. And this is such a challenge. <laughs> but the one at home I have has 16 strings. So it goes from like there until there-ish. But this guy has this bass that, and I can't get over it. I can't. It's just absolutely insane. It's like a cross between slap bass and kind of guitar playing, but then you can play these dense like chords like you can on a piano because the strings are so close to each other. So it's, the whole thing is just bananas. It's like, and this is, this is the first time you played that one, is that yeah, true? Yeah, this is the first time I've ever had one with, with bass in it. And yet, I mean, I have to shout out Harpeggi for hooking me up with this, but it's, it's incredible to have this, like that, that's the bottom note on a piano. Like we're talking serious loath. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, man, it sounds great. Harpeggi, thank you. And yes. uh, I wanted to, before... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I was just... Hey, you're welcome. For the <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we move on to the third song, I want to... I don't know. I don't think we got a chance to talk about the environment that we're in and all the tapes on the walls. I don't know if you've looked back and saw the Talking Heads and the Tom Petty tape and the John Coltrane and all that. Yeah. Uh, but there is... I mean, this is like a, a musical museum going back to the mid-50s. 1953 is the, the oldest tape in here. Um, can we talk a little bit about no answer that you could give would possibly surprise me in any way. Can we, can we talk about musical uh, influences and what inspired you while you're growing up or while you're writing uh, these this four volume Jesse? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't I, I can't say that I've ever rejected anything I've ever heard. That really. sounds right. Yeah. So I've always been super thirsty for all sorts of stuff. Um, but to sort of sum up my musical chartered in maybe a few names, Stevie Wonder. And then Stevie Wonder is number two as well. And then Sting, uh, Bobby McFerrin, Earth, Wind & Fire, Johann Sebastian Bach, um, Ben from Britain, Igor Stravinsky, uh, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, um, Becky Stevens. There, there, there are like a few different people, but <laughs> I, there were so many different flavors that I wanted to combine. And so, I don't know, I guess I, 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 I thought that there might be a way to sort of create this compound of all the things that I liked without taking things out. And for me, the exciting thing about creating music in 2019 and beyond is that the, the idea of genres and, and, and categories uh, is just falling apart before our very ears and eyes. And so now I think y you can be a musician no matter what you love. And so like I could be into Opeth and I can be into, what's the opposite of Opeth? I think Johnny Mitchell is pretty good. <laughs> Johnny Mitchell, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, Johnny Mitchell. Um, yeah, or some like weird Bulgarian folk music or Gnawa music, like Hamid, or whatever. And, and I, I believe there are bridges between all these different spaces, so I, I think I just listened with these, with, with willing ears, you know? And I, I was lucky as a kid, but because I had 
a scenario at home where I was able to have musical discussions with my mum, mostly. And children kind of have as many ideas as there are ears to hear them, I think. And so when I was asking these questions, like, but what happens if you add B flat to an F minor chord? Like, how does it make you feel? Then that would be reciprocated. And, and that sort of sense of study, like emotional study and concentration, fueled so much of my growth and still fuels me right now. Which is why, like, if I find a harpeggio, for example, it just feels like an opportunity to expand rather than something I have to close myself down into. Like, I don't really think of myself as an instrumentalist, per se. Even though I play a few instruments, it's more about the music, I think. Like, playing the music, it kind of sounds simple, but playing the music and using the instrument as just, like, a means to an end. And singing, for me, is super important. And it wasn't until, I guess I was 15 or 16, that I realised that Stevie Wonder recorded all the instruments on the albums, or most of them. Um, which is amazing, because I hadn't considered it before then that it was possible. But Stevie just makes music that feels really, really damn good. And that's the most important thing, and so you, you get a sense of joy. And it smells like Stevie Wonder, right? You can feel it's him, because his fingerprints are all over it. But, and, and that's literally true. But also, I think he just he's one of those musical masterminds that can concentrate on multiple facets of what's going on, whether it's the sound, or the, or the chords, or the rhythm, or the groove, or the tone. And he's one of those multifaceted people. So I would go back to my numbers, n n numbers one and two, and say Stevie Wonder's my number one hero. Nice. Well, <laughs> dude, thank you for bringing it here today. You're sitting in front of a Stevie Wonder tape, and there's a, there's a police from Orpheum 1979 really? tape right over there. Yeah, we can do some tape shopping right yeah, as yeah. right offline. And there's a, a Rolling Thunder review tape sitting on my desk right now, so we oh, can right. we can do a little bit of tape browsing. And uh, yeah, dude, there's plenty of uh, friendly spirits here in this room, and you are very much adding to it. it right now. So we appreciate thank it to you. no thank end. Thank you so much for having us. Honestly. Yeah, man. Of course, dude. This sounds great. Um, so there's there's more music, right? Can you tell us what you're gonna do third yeah, today? So when I woke up this morning, I thought, well, what can I do for the third song? And I thought, well, Sting wrote a tune called Fields of Gold. And then I thought, well, I could sing Fields of Gold. But I've, I've never played it on the harmonizer before. Uh, no, it's on the harmonizer. That's a different instrument. This is the harpeggi. I've never played on the harpeggi before. So you have to bear with me, because it's really, really a, a bit of a mysterious thing to navigate. So just, I'll do Fields of Gold. And who knows what's going to happen? Really? <laughs> yes. OK, here we go. When the west wind moves From all the fields of barley You'll forget the sun In his jealous sky As we lie Fields of gold So she took her love Among the fields of Wally In his arms she fell As her head came down Among the fields of Wally
you stay with me? Will you be my love? On the fields of water In his arms she fell as a hand came down About her feelings of gold Promises like and there have been some that I've broken. I swear in the day still left we we'll walk in fields of gold. Ooh. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody so much for coming through. Before we let you go, Jacob, can you introduce us to everybody, please? Oh, I'd love to. Okay, so over here, we've got Murica Murr. Michael, <laughs> Ma Michael Mayo. That's Michael Mayo. He's absolutely ridiculously killing. Over here, my brand new friend, Julia Easterlin. We met yesterday. Hey, Good, Julie. Goodbye. Um, over here is the drummer in my band. His name's Christian Newman. Christian. <laughs> oh, oh, please. This is the legendary Rebecca Stevens. And over here we have uh, Malika Tirolian. Is that right? Yeah. Tirolian. All right. Uh, absolute mastermind, musical mastermind. Thank you, Malika. All right. Well, thank and you so much for coming too. here today. And best of luck on uh, Jesse 2 and Jesse 3 and Jesse 4. Jesse 3 and 4 are going to come out in the coming months. Uh, number 2 is out in the world right now. And you've got, there's three tour dates that I know about. You've got a, a audio in Sao Paulo that's happening November 5th. Uh, November 8th, you're at Teatro Vorterix in Buenos Aires. On the 10th, you're at uh, Club Subterraneo in Providencio, Chile. Enjoy all of them. Man, that sounds like a, not a bad part of the world to be spending time in, so enjoy it. Wait. Travel safe. Safely, please. And dude, come back anytime. We're here doing this all the time. So if you want to come back, do. If you have us, that'll be amazing. All right, yeah, dude. Thank you. so much, dude. All right.